Hi there, welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. For this project, I'm just using this scrap piece of wood that I had painted the edges black and I put a deer head on it. I didn't use it for Christmas at all this year, so I decided to use it for Valentine's. I'm going to just use some cardstock here. It's almost like poster board, but not quite, and just measure out how much I need to cover the complete face of the sign. I'm going to cover the cardstock with this Buffalo Check wrapping paper that I picked up a couple of years ago from Michaels. I just used a regular glue stick to apply it and now I'm just going to cut off the excess. Using a glue stick instead of Mod Podge for wrapping paper does give you less wrinkles. I do have a few bubbles here, I'm just going to work them out. To apply the cardstock onto the wood, I am going to use Mod Podge. I'm not going to use a huge layer because I don't want it to buckle and wrinkle, but I'm just going to make sure that everything is covered evenly, especially around the edges and the corners. I was inspired by this sign from Kirkland's. I loved the way the heart looked like pieces of wood and they were all kind of separate in different colors. So it inspired me to do something a little different. I'm taking different types of rope and string and twine and I'm going to create that look, but with a neutral tone. I thought I would end up using some of the thicker ropes as well, but I decided to stick with more of the medium and narrower ropes. It just looked a lot better with those. I didn't really have a pattern, but I kind of evolved into a pattern as I went. I also started fluffing out the ends of the ropes because I just thought it made it even more of a fun texture to have it a little bit fuzzy around the edges. I'd like to take a quick sec and thank all of my current and newer subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. If you're new to my channel and you like what you see, I would love for you to hit that red button too. Once I had all of the larger pieces complete, it was time to start figuring out how to create the two bumps on the top of the heart. So I just decided to create two different sides, cut the ropes smaller, and leave the space in the center. Then I just gradually made each of these shorter strands even shorter so they would be more rounder when I got to the top. Once I was done, I fluffed out the rest of the edges and then trimmed off any of the little bits that were sticking out in a weird way. I have some burlap ribbon that has a self-adhesive backing, but instead of pulling the backing off, I decided to glue it on just the way it is because then you wouldn't see the black and the white difference of the texture coming through from the paper. I'm just going to cut the ribbon in half so I have smaller strips and I'm just going to frame out the sign. I topped it off with a little black and white striped bow and I think this turned out super cute. Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. So here's what the box looks like when you first open it up. It's got this insulated cardboard in here and that keeps everything nice and cool. They gave me three meals and all of the recipe cards are included. So you can see what you're going to be making. You have all of the ingredients listed here and then your recipes instructions are on the back. So each of these three bags is labeled. I'll take one out here. And it says the beef kofta tray bake. So I know that all of the ingredients for that recipe are right in here. On the back, you can see that they have all the nutrition facts for the recipe as well. So once you take out all of your bags, down at the bottom, oh, wow, this one's heavy. <laughs> down at the bottom, and there's my garlic, are some ice packs that are totally solid still. I received this box yesterday and I'm only unpacking it today and everything is still totally like it would be in the fridge. So I've got some chicken breast, I've got 
the mild Italian ground pork for my hoagies, and I have here some lean ground beef for my kofta. So I have everything I need to create three delicious meals. These ingredients are for the teriyaki chicken recipe with garlic rice and broccoli. Everything comes packaged the way you see here, so all of your servings are already ready to go. That's one of the things I love about HelloFresh. It's really easy to control portions. The first thing to do is to prep your chicken. You can do whatever you want with it. The recipe calls for slicing it horizontally in half. I'm actually just going to leave them in sort of stir fry strips. That's just easier for me to do. It's really easy to adapt the recipe to what's easier for you. Next, I'm going to take the broccoli, even though it's already cut up, some of them are larger than others. So I'm going to put them into bite-sized pieces. The green onions are a garnish for the top of the chicken when it's complete. So I'm just going to cut it in diagonal slices. I wish you were here in the kitchen with me. This smells delicious. The other thing that I really love about the HelloFresh recipes is that you don't have to use a lot of dishes. I'm going to be cooking the chicken and the broccoli all in one dish, this skillet, and then I only have my rice cooker to deal with. So only two dishes for cooking. Because all the food was already portioned out for me, I didn't have to do a whole lot of meal prep, which is a huge plus for me. I've removed the chicken and set it aside and in again the same skillet I'm going to saute the broccoli. The HelloFresh recipes change on a weekly basis so you're never having to choose from the same meals over and over again. They have some family friendly options which is what I have here. They also have some calorie smart which I'm going to be using, some pescatarian and some veggie options. I was also really excited to learn that HelloFresh sources their produce from local farmers. The produce comes from the farm to your doorstep in under a week. I think that's awesome. With the long winter months here in Ontario, HelloFresh is going to help me stay inside, stay warm and cozy and create delicious meals. HelloFresh is also helping me keep on track with my grocery budget. Not having to go to the grocery store that often is really helping me and my family stay on track with a healthier eating lifestyle. Go to HelloFresh.com, use the code SHVOVEN16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. This is an amazing offer and you're not going to want to miss out. Again, it's HelloFresh.com, SHVOVEN16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. So here's the official taste test. I'm going to be trying the beef kofta bake and this is what it looks like all together on the plate. I've got my couscous, I've got the meat and veggies, and I've got some hummus. So let's give it a try. Smells delicious. Mmm, really, really good. I'll give a chance of the couscous. Mmm, delicious. Really super easy to make. I love that it was a one pan meal except for the couscous really easy cleanup. What do you think, mom? Delicious. So it's unanimous. We love this. Thanks, HelloFresh. In this project, I'm going to take this grapevine garland that I have, and I'm going to just snip the bottom of it and then kind of try and bend it a little bit straighter at the end without breaking any of the vines just to make a heart shape. Then I'll just use some hot glue and some wire to put it all together. It's not the best heart shape but I'm going to fix that in a little bit. I'm using these red and white pipberry garlands that I got from the dollar stores and I'm going to wrap the white ones around towards the back of the heart and the red ones I'm going to put in the front of the heart. This was my inspiration from Kirkland's. I think this wreath is so, so pretty because I love all of the Pipberry garlands. I love to use those in all of my decor for all seasons. Mine doesn't turn out exactly like that, but I really love how it turned out anyway. 
I started by taking three strands of the pip berries and just kind of winding them around each other. I did this for the white and for the red. Then I'm just going to tuck it in the grapevine strands there. I'm not using a lot of hot glue for this project because I want to be able to use these berries or the wreath for something different in the future. Since the garlands are wired, I can just use the ends and just twist them around the grapevine wreath to hold them in place. Once I had the white berry garland on there, I pinched the bottom of it so it would be into a V shape. This makes it look more like a heart. Now I'm just going to continue adding the red berries more towards the top of the wreath. I'm going to make another two fingered bow. These have turned into my favorite ways to make bows. I use this for smaller ribbons like these, but I also have done them with the really large ribbons like the two and a half inch wide. And it works really well with that too. It's just a little more difficult because you're working with a larger piece of fabric. What you do is hold the ribbon in your hands with a little tail hanging down. You wrap it around your fingers twice, then you can cut off the excess. Now you take this end and push it through the hole in your fingers, making sure that it's nice and straight. You bring the ribbon around from the back, then pull up the loop there, and you're going to be taking this end of the ribbon and going through it from the bottom up. That is going to create a nice pretty loop on the one side. You grab that there and then tighten it up and then just kind of move it back and forth until you've got the tightness that you wanted. Now you can simply take it off your fingers and adjust the tails, pull out the two little loops on each side. And I am not a bow person, but this one is my favorite. I think I love this probably a little bit better than just the regular shoestring bow, but those are pretty much the only types of bows that I use here on my channel. I glued the bow in the front with a little bit of hot glue and then I'm going to create a loop hanger for the back. Now normally you would put something on like this. I don't like putting it that way because when you're using ribbon on the nail or the hook or wherever you're putting it, the ribbon gets all bunchy and ugly. So what I like to do is turn my ends and lay them flat like you see me doing here and that creates a beautiful straight loop to hang. For this project, I'm using a process called sublimation. I'm using a dedicated printer and sublimation ink from Hippo. I'll have the links for all of my products down in the description box. You need to have a dedicated printer because sublimation ink is very different than other types of ink. This is an Epson 2720 EcoTank, which means that the tanks are refillable, which is very, very convenient. I created my design in Google Drawing and I reversed the image because I have text on it. With sublimation, you need to reverse your text because you're going to be laying this face down onto your material. I'm using a cloth napkin. This is 100% polyester. For sublimation, you need to have at least 60% polyester to 40% cotton. The higher the polyester count, the better the washability of your item will be. I'm just using my Cricut Easy Press to give this a nice iron first and get all of the wrinkles out before I put my paper on. With sublimation, it's really important to make sure that you have a heat resistant Teflon sheet underneath your project, simply because the ink has the possibility of going right through to your little ironing board or your pad, whatever you're using. I'm using heat resistant Teflon tape to hold the paper in place onto the fabric. All of these supplies will be in my description box. So if you're interested in doing sublimation, check there first and then check some of my other videos that I'll have listed at the end of this one if you want more information on sublimation. 
Next, I'm going to put another sheet of Teflon on top of my design. I don't want the paper to burn and I don't want any of the ink to possibly get onto my Easy Press. I've got the degrees set to about 325. I think I probably should have done it a little bit higher, but when you get your sublimation paper, it will have instructions on the heat that you need to use. I'm putting mine on for about 65 seconds and I found that worked fairly well for this project. Here comes my favorite part, which is the reveal of your image onto the fabric. And look at how pretty that turned out. It has some greens and some grays, a little bit of lavender. I love it. I'm making this napkin into a pillow, but I only need the front side to be white. So I'm just gonna cut it down to the size that I need and I'm just using my grid pad underneath to help me keep the lines straight. I picked up this soft, cuddly baby blanket from Dollarama last year. I had planned to use it for some winter projects, but didn't get around to it, so I've got lots of it left. I'm going to use this as the back of my pillow, so I'm just cutting out the size that is required. I'm just going to use hot glue to put these two pieces together. I've got them facing with the right sides together on the inside and I'm just going to put a bead of hot glue around the edges on three sides and then I'll turn it right side out. I'm always very gentle when I'm pushing my finger into the corners of the pillows when they're glued because I don't want it to come apart. I'm going to stuff the pillow quite full. I want it to be nice and fluffy. And then I'm going to fold down the ends to the inside and then glue them together. And that will give them the same seam effect as the other three sides. This is where I got the inspiration for this pillow. I hope you enjoyed my Valentine's DIYs and got some inspiration to create a little love for your home. Please make sure you hit that thumbs up. That really helps my channel get noticed more on YouTube. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. You don't want to miss out on what's happening on my channel. That notification bell, if you click it, will tell you every time I upload something new. Bye for now.